America's Cup challenger, for record Ineos Britannia might have to rethink the current phase of testing after an onboard failure saw one of their boats damaged. The team were out on their LEQ-12, named T6, last Saturday, to test a version of their rudder design. They were being towed on their foils, without their rig, in light conditions. The session looked to be going smoothly, until a failure in the rudder system saw it begin to move in an unusual manner, the boat then made a sharp 90-degree turn nosediving the boat and tossing the sailors around. Nobody was hurt and the boat was towed back for extensive repairs in Barcelona. We're here with Giles Scott, helmsman on board T6 of the Ineos Britannia. You're out on the water today for some tow testing with version B rudder today. Yeah. I unfortunately had a tough moment while foiling on the tow. Can you explain what happened? Yeah, well, we went out to do some tow testing today. Obviously, took the boat out with, with, with no rig. There was some stuff that we wanted to wanted to look at with the rudder. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, we saw a bit of a, an extreme load case and ended up, uh, you know, with some pretty heavy damage. And the guys behind me here are getting the getting the boat sort of to be craned out. And there'll be a lot of diagnosis that's been needed in terms of working out exactly what happened and why. Um, but yeah, we'll get the boat back in the shed and, and hopefully we'll be back out soon. We had a brief look at the footage. It looked like you lost steering and the rudder started to oscillate until the structure gave way. Did you feel the loss of steering? Yeah, there was, um, I mean, to be honest, it, it, it happened reasonably, reasonably quickly, as I'm sure the video will kind of show that we, we were under reasonable control and then, yeah, there, there was a failure and, uh, yeah, we ended up pointing the wrong direction and, and, and in the water. Um, fortunately, you know, no one was hurt and just a bit of uh, boat damage to deal with, which is obviously not what we want, but the important thing is everyone's, everyone's all good. So we can see behind you the rudder stock is sticking out at like a 45 degree angle, yeah. similar to what happened to Alinghi Red Bull Racing. Any guess how long T6 will be out for? No, I think it's a question for the, for the shore guys and, and the design, I'm not, not too sure. As I said, we'll, we'll get it back into the shed and have a good look over exactly what's happened and why. Um, and of course, our goal will be to get back out on the water as quickly as possible. What was the goal for today? Uh, the toe testing to look at the rudder. So, so you, you are focusing on the hydro systems? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Were you implementing a new steering system? No, no new steering system. We just had a few things that we wanted to sign off with the rudder. Um, and, you know, I suppose on the, you know, we, we, do, we knew that today we were pushing to an extreme. Um, and unfortunately, we, we overstepped the mark there. But, you know, I think the, the positive side of it is, is that we've Albeit some destructive data, we've got a good, good, good point in the data set there, and uh, it can only help for RB3. At least it's a test boat. So, exactly. can you just explain uh, how you're pushing to the extremes on this on this new rudder? What what are you looking for, and what are, uh, what are you expecting? I won't go into the details, but uh, you know, I think some of the images that you guys will have got and the video is to some extent self-explanatory. So, I'll let you, I'll let you, everyone use their imaginations there. The boat looked very stable. Were you flying in autopilot? Uh, yeah, it's pretty stable in under autopilot or under manual. Um, we every day we go out, we you know we we use both systems. Would you be sailing AC40 from now on for the future? Well, we'll future? have to, as I said, we'll have to have a look at what T6 is like. Um, yeah, as you say, we've got the AC40 in the shed as well, so we'll you know we'll we'll sort out our plan this evening once we've got a good idea of how the, how the boat is. Giles, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. This is your weekly Global Sailing Highlights show, The World on Water, October 13, 2023. Carrying the flag for the UK, the Emirates Great Britain Sail GP team is driven by the most successful Olympic sailor of all time, Sir Ben Ainsley. Alongside Ainsley, Emirates GBR's crew lineup is packed with the country's top sporting talent including the most successful female Olympic sailor, strategist Hannah Mills OBE. As well as becoming the first team to take franchise ownership, Emirates GBR has been a formidable force on the Sail GP race track since it joined the league in season one and often deploys fierce match racing tactics to get ahead of the fleet. We listen in to the onboard comms. Yeah, yeah, okay, get ready for it here, guys. Okay, let's go. Okay. Yeah, it feels like you could take a pop. Take, take and wait. Coming. Coming now. That's your foil here. 
Yep. Yep, can do it. Okay. Still really in this here. Right turn to finish, so we are going to have two more manoeuvres. Well, just being a soaky, uh, soaky ley line, right? Yeah, we just want to come in in the three. Yeah, I just, I guess we'll foil as far as we can, huh? Yeah, pressure looks good to carry on. I think we just stay fast H2 here. Yep. Yeah. Copy. Massive gaze to us here, we're pretty solid. Nice. Nice hustle. The DRHEAM Cup, a Grand Prix de France de course AU Large 2024, the race between Cherbourgie and Cotentin, and La Trinite sur Mer, will jump another hurdle in its fifth edition, as results will count towards the ROIC Championship, and it will be the second race in the IRC two-handed European Championship. Like two years ago, three courses, DC 600, DC 1000, DC 1500, will be organized for the 11 classes invited, including the Sun Fast 31 design, which has recently been presented and christened at Southampton Boat Show and the Grand Pavois in La Rochelle. Le partenariat entre la Dream Cup et Cherbourg en Cotentin, c'est un partenariat important. Aujourd'hui, très clairement, notre ambition est affirmée. Nous souhaitons être un grand port de la course au large. Et c'est là-dessus que nous travaillons depuis plusieurs années. J'ai l'impression aujourd'hui que les fruits commencent à arriver. C'est une belle épreuve et j'espère qu'elle va continuer à vivre et à augmenter encore en taille parce que je crois que c'est un beau et des beaux parcours en plus. C'est un privilège de, euh, de pouvoir participer à cette course. Jacques, hein, vraiment, elle est magnifique, ta course. Pour moi, la Dream Cup, elle rentre euh, complètement dans un calendrier qui se font se rencontrer finalement euh, professionnels, amateurs, euh, petits bateaux, grands bateaux. Très agréable, très méditerranéen comme climat. Une, bien, une belle organisation, qu'est-ce qu'on veut de plus Ça fait plaisir de retrouver et de mélanger tous ces milieux professionnels et puis amateurs euh, sur l'eau. Je trouve que le mélange entre les classes 40, les Figaro, les IRC, les multi 50, les multi 2000, euh, ça permet à tout propriétaire de bateau de pouvoir euh, régater et naviguer avec une flotte magnifique. C'est vrai qu'il manque quelque part dans le calendrier de la course au large en France des épreuves comme la, la Fastnet ou, ou la Cineo Bar. Donc voilà, la Team Cup est, est là pour combler ce déficit et on est très heureux. On voit qu'il y a beaucoup de catégories différentes. Ça va des ultimes au Figaro. Donc il y en a pour tous les goûts. Tout est réuni pour, un, pour une belle épreuve. On a le même enthousiasme et la même admiration pour tous ces, ces navigateurs. Et, et l'engagement que j'ai senti de la part du maire de Cherbourg, moi je le relais volontiers et je m'inscris dans un partenariat durable. We are sailing only media. Please subscribe, share, like, and check the alerts bell. After three light air races on day one of Kitefoil World Series Austria, Martin Dolenk opened his score sheet with a strong defence of last year's victory on Lake Traunsey. Australia's Brianna Whitehead had a very good day as she sits in ninth overall in the combined rankings and is the top-placed female rider. We have days one and two. Three races done. Jimmy, what did you see and who was winning and why? So we have Martin Dolench from Croatia and he was defending his 2022 title. So two race wins from him. And the third race win of the day was from Janis Maas, the German rider. And in the girls, we also had Brianna Whitehead all the way from Australia doing such a good job uh, with two race wins for her and Julia Damasovic from Poland with the third race win. So the fleet pretty happy with how things have worked out for day one and we look to see what Transy will bring for the coming days. See you tomorrow. Six 
Short, sharp race is still added up to a hard day on the water for the riders on Lake Trounsey. In the men, we saw multiple race wins from a variety of the top four. Uh, Maximilian Mader, the current world champion, and Martin Dolench from Croatia. We also saw Dennis Taradin take two race wins with the strategy, if you want to win, you have to start at the pin. And man of the day has to be Florian Gruber with a full, consistent performance, always up there for the German rider. In the women's division, Lorianne Nolo, the reigning world champion, had a really good day racing in amongst the men and now closing the gap to just two points on Australia's Brianna Whitehead, who still leads the girls, but it is getting closer between those two. It doesn't get much more glamour than this on Lake Tramsey. See you tomorrow for more where you can join us on the live stream. The Australian 18-footers league's 89th consecutive 18-foot skiff racing season began on Sydney Harbour when the club staged race one of the 2023-24 Spring Championship, which resulted in a victory for the Australian champion, Finport Finance team of Keegan York, Matt Stenter and Phil Marshall. Finport Finance produced a brilliant performance, in the light east-north-east breeze, to overcome her handicap under the three boys system, and win the exciting opening race to the season. In a race where the lead changed on numerous occasions over the three-lap north-eastly course, Finport Finance crossed the finish line 37 seconds ahead of Yangdu. 10 seconds. Fisher Pikel well, looks. Oh, Fisher no, Pikel's Pike no Pike good. Gone. Andrew's gone with him. No, no he has pulled away. Plenty oh, of boats over. So it could be general, I think. <clears throat> Do we think? Well, they might test the new system, Pete. Well, one horn. Individual. Individual. Wow. Well, that's good work for the committee. Great work. Okay, so there's a couple of, couple of coming back already. Marine Outlet and At Fisher and Pikel. Fisher Pikel is coming back. So they didn't like where they were. Certainly Fisher and Pikel was very well advanced. Okay, the fleet are on their way on starboard tack. Majority except Speg who's tacked quickly onto port. Just a little... That's a flag down. The individual flags down okay, on the so committee all boats, so all okay. clear. Yep, well done, Jimmy. So the race is on to Bradley's, and it's Yandu that's got a nice little lead. He's jumped out nicely. That's him with the, the white sails on the <coughs> foreground, with the blue and red oval. So this will be the interesting one. Andu went as far left as most, and now he's coming back. You'll see him there. There he is, not far out of it, and moving pretty nicely. So you'll see the boys peering on the left of screen. There's the first mark just coming up to Shore and Partners. Shore and Partners, nice lay. Yep. So you'll go round and on her way. So she now jumps into the lead. Because you're going to the shortest mark. There they go. Terrific job. Pretty cool thing, right? Leading your first race. Yeah, Emma Rankin and the crew. And it's going to be a tight spinnaker run now down to the shark, as Andrew said, as Yandu goes around the middle mark. Poor old Finport, he's got to stagger up to the furthest mark. Yep. So they're all going to hoist. Shaw's partner's up. Woody's got his up. It's yep. all good. Tight angle. Wow. That's a very tight angle here. Full noise, you blokes. Yeah. Full noise. Oh, they're all getting really headed down there. Sure, part has got the spinning her off. It's coming around the bow of Yandu. We'll get to them in a moment. It's the blue spinning of Burrowang. Oh, we're on the in a sixth. Great shot that there's Yandu dropping the spinning again. Sure, partner's got round his bow. So they'll two sail reach into the island. Perhaps it's okay. Just 90 apparent wind angle. Great bit of pressure for the next couple of boats coming into the corner. 
which is <coughs> smack just top right of screen with Finport. There they are. In case, they're smacking in a good bit of new breeze, bringing it with them to some degree here. We'll chase the leaders at VMG run now back to the city of Clark Island. And it's still Shore and Partners just in the middle of the Sydney Harbour Bridge with the red spinning up. Bow up now, who leads from Yandu. And going across on Port Jive with the black spinnaker is Keegan York in Finport. Lovely afternoon on the harbour. Eight to nine knots out of the east northeast. The first race of uh, the new season. There's Yandu yeah. jiving. Yeah, as soon as you don't have a catch flow, the boat's basically revert to normal boats. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> going okay. about as slow as a slow keel boat yeah. there, the shore and partners. Yeah, they will lead. Just narrowly, as you can see, boat length in it. Just so, got a puff to get down there at the end there. They're around. Oh, they came in hot and, and a yeah. uh, bit like Formula One for the viewers here. You can determine who win the race by the proportion of the time the whole crew's on the end of the rack. And... and uh, Sure, and partners wasted 30 seconds there probably with nobody on the rack at all. Sure, and partners is tacking in line. Oh, sure, and partners has capsized. Wow, just capsized in the tack, I think. Just to the left of the screen there, they are. Yep. There I am. Oh dear, that's a disappointment. So they uh, earned the dubious honour of the first race capsize of the season. Yandu's just tacked for the Beachel Boy. There it is. He's around. Shore and Partners about five, four boat lengths from their turning mark. So that's a big run straight back down the harbour now. And have a look at this, guys. The Naomi Ferry just going to split those two boats. Yep. So that tells you Shore and Partners are quite a way in front at this moment. So the breeze headed Yandu here, which hurt him a little. Okay, they've got a drop here. So Finport's going to be about 25 seconds astern. Balmain's in the mix. Six in the mix. Not even that, Pete, I don't think. No, no. Finport's got a real nice header to get down. So is Balmain. Good header, and they, they're going to do a job drop. Yeah, Henry and Larkin's on Balmain. Done a terrific job. Look at this. Finport right in the touch here. <coughs> wow. Yeah, sure, and partners. Nice job. They've laid that. Mark, as we're watching Yandu tack at the yeah, Beachel Boy. Sure, and partner's going to lead. How about that? Temporarily. Yes. Sure, and partner's. Oh, maybe not. Well, yeah, they will. Finport, too much bang on, boys. Oh, sure, and partner's round the short mark. Yep. So there's a race. But, and yeah. Balmain round the middle mark. So on the water at the moment, sure, and partner's just getting their spinnaker up. Finport will take the lead Finport off Finport about to roll them. Yeah. With Spalmain third, Yandu fourth. Finport's hanging on. He'll think he'll carry it as far as he can down to this island and shoot up. Yep. So for the northeastern side, not accustomed to watching, the bow comes up. The minimum bow up is about 20 degrees from when the spinnaker is up to when the spinnaker's not up the bow has to come up 20 degrees to keep keep the uh, flow attached and the boat sailing reasonably fast. So Finport almost at the mark in a nice puff you know great bow down wind. spinnaker up yep. and then VMG run to the finish there's your round now. Great win here to Finport he's 30 meters from home first race of the, the new season the spring championship and of a scratch, coming in, coming in hot. Too. Of a scratch handicap, went to the longest mark each time. Keegan York, Phil Marshall, Phil Stanner, Matty Stanner. Matt Stanner, well done. Good showing, guys. Very good job. Nice job. So I think we've seen a great race today, Andrew. First race, so it's had a bit of everything. Yeah, no, technically yeah. complex. The scratch boat won, which is unusual. So yeah. now everybody else has kicked off scratch for next week, the way the handicapping system works. So Finport making a little mark and, and, and pushing Andu and Yandu out to a couple of minutes handicap. Almost 20 schooners, ranging from the pride of Baltimore 2 to the schooner Woodwinds, 
to the Virginia, began their voyage to Norfolk, Virginia in light winds, in the Great Chesapeake Bay Schooner Race. The 2023 event was another challenging year weather-wise. Both Thursday and Friday were almost becalmed, and the entire race became a drifting match. The finish lines for Classes B and C were moved up to Cove Point. And even so, many boats did not manage to get there before noon on Friday. The Great Chesapeake Bay Schooner Race was founded to promote public awareness of the Chesapeake Bay's maritime heritage and encourage the preservation and improvement of the Chesapeake's natural resources. We accomplished this goal by presenting educational programs and supporting regional organizations who share this vision. Almost 20 schooners, ranging from the Pride of Baltimore to, to the Schooner Woodwinds, to the Virginia, began this voyage to Norfolk, Virginia in light winds, with Annapolis Maritime Museum and Parks Wilma Lee, looking on. The Eastport Yacht Club was on the scene for the race committee. Twenty twenty three was another challenging year weather wise. Both Thursday and Friday were almost becalmed, and the entire race became a drifting match. The finish lines for classes B and C were moved up to Cove Point. And even so, many boats did not manage to get there before noon on Friday. North Wind won Class B by dint of continuing to race until noon, while the rest of the boats in that class had. The Black Dog Trophy is the board's most prestigious honor. Named and modeled after race founder Captain Briggs' faithful companion, Rebel, its bronze statue of a black dog signifies loyalty to the race mission and faithful and honorable support for the event without personal recognition, in the spirit of Lena Briggs. The Black Dog Trophy is not an annual award, but is only presented when significant service is deserving of very special recognition. We were honored and proud to award the Black Dog Trophy to Peter Briggs. Peter has been involved in the race from the very early days. He is always willing to step in and do whatever needs doing, and has been instrumental in helping to make this race the success it is today. Congratulations Peter! Thank you also to, Captain Boomies for the help on the filming of the boats. Now sit back and enjoy the beautiful boats in the starting area.